Hi, my name is Laura. I head up level design here at Rivet Games. There's three of us here in the level design team, myself, Emma and Duncan. I tend to take a sort of larger view of the route as a whole um, and try and keep on top of everything from start to finish. And um, the guys will um, jump on and help put things together in a sort of smaller bite-sized chunks as we go. You know, some people have strengths in different areas, so you have to kind of divide the, t the tasks up to try and uh, play to people's strengths. Okay, so what we do in, in, in level design is basically create the routes um, from absolutely nothing to 100% completion. We get the route um, once the track is in and the height data is in, which gives us a good starting point. We then spend time um, putting in roads and infrastructure, uh, placing assets, placing foliage. Basically everything that you'll see in the route um, is placed by the, the route building team themselves. So at the beginning of a route, what I'll usually do is I will create a, a route map. Um, we create this map in Google Earth from start to finish. We will use a, a red line as a marker for start to finish and um, what I'll do is I'll go through then with a fine tooth comb and um, pick out uh, everything that we'll need. So we'll start with station buildings and then we'll move on to bridges and infrastructure, anything that interacts with the track. Then we move on to sort of more iconic buildings or things that um, potentially would stand out in this route um, that you would notice if you were travelling on the route. Once we have um, created this uh, file, uh, we number it sequentially from start to finish which will give every single asset that we will require in the route a number. Uh, once we have this list, it is then passed over to the art team, so they have a list of everything that we will require in order to build the route. At that point, there's usually a bit of back and forth with the art team as to exactly what we need, but I can get into specifics with each asset and what we require and what we will need in order to for the, the asset to fit well within the route. So we take the marker set from Google Earth and put it in and then that translates perfectly so we have um, exactly the marker points in the route where, where they would be in, in the real world. Um, so at that point um, this can also help the track layers if they, once they start to lay track and everything they, they have like a, a clear path that uh, they can follow. We also have Google Earth overlay which is a huge help for us as well so we can we can see all the Google Earth data that we need um, in order to, to work on the route, so that helps with the track line as well. Once we have um, the height data and the track in the game, this allows me to then go in and create a tile map for the route. The tile map we use primarily to, to distinguish between um, who's working in which area. So you'll have, say, two or three people working um, in a route and each person has an assigned colour um, and that allows us to work uh, without stepping on each other's toes. Also, it allows us to see the progress which we, we're making in, in the route. We have a key of completion, so if anybody at any given time wanted to know where we were in the route, they would be able to, to jump on and have a look. At the moment, we're in the sort of middle stages, so um, a lot of the tiles are um, needing completion, but we're still waiting on um, some fixes to assets and some station clutter needing placed and um, passengers, NPCs needing placed, so it, it's things like that that kind of, you can see the, the station areas themselves um, which are highlighted in bold and um, are oranged out at the moment. You can see why they're obviously less complete than other areas, um, but we are getting to a stage now where we are signing off models and we're signing off tiles, so that that will be the next thing we'll be turning a lot of these game. Um, these relate to tiles in game, so each tile is a kilometre uh, in size, a kilometre square. Um, if I zoom out there for you, you can see that's your square kilometre there. Um, and as you go along the, the route, it will highlight each one that you're in. And we would then move on to placing roads so that once the artists start working on the infrastructure, which we've, um, we've asked for, they can extract this data and um, obviously model around it, which makes life a lot easier for them. You can see here, all this has been modelled as one asset, um, the station, uh, all the infrastructure that goes around the station, you can see selected in red there. Um, without the track and the roads, that would make life incredibly difficult for the, the 3D artists, so the, getting the roads in as soon as possible is, is key. Uh, once we place roads for artists, we then move on to the catenary, which is overhead wires on the route, 
we spend a fair bit of time ensuring that we get this um, right. Each country will have its own style and uh, we've, we've started working on um, Katerina in a lot more detail than we have done in the past and roots. We have um, a large amount of catenary that we that we work from. Um, some of it we can use uh, the tool for. The tool interacts with the track. Um, this is really useful and really quick if you have a, a, a simple stretch of track to use. You can um, click and click and click and it will automatically place catenary for you along, along a line. However, sometimes the track can get slightly more complicated like in an area like this here. This is something where you would actually need to spend the time um, placing individual masts, placing individual brackets and ensuring that the wires remain within the yellow guides at all times so it does get to points where it is slightly more complicated and we need to spend the time to ensure that um, we're keeping the accuracy and we're keeping um, to to the level of detail that the player would want. We work to these uh, yellow guides you can see here. Um, they relate to the tra each track has its own yellow guide, so you can see there that it starts to split where the track splits, and you can see um, what we need to do is remain within the yellow guides. The wires will be pulled or pushed in the direction that it needs to be. If you can kind of think of a wire as a, a, an elastic band, um, it needs to be tensioned in a specific direction in order for it to remain taut. So you can see there that wire is being pulled to the outside of the, the yellow guides on that side there and then it's being pulled to the inside there. So we need we need to ensure that everything that we place is accurate um, and as how it would be in in the real world. So this does take um, a wee bit of time. The, the, the yellow guides really do help um, us to work more efficiently through this. This is also where having Google Train View can be really, really useful as well because sometimes you have to work to the way the game works and how um, how you can get the container to work in the game, but um, if you get the track laid accurately, um, usually when you have a look in Google Earth and you're sort of struggling with a bit of area, uh, how the container would work, you can look in Google Earth and kind of see like how they've done it in the real world and it really does a, a work and the container tool does work the way that it should work in the real world so it's um, it's quite nice to see it when it all comes together at the end and you've spent that time making it sure that it's accurate and that it's right and then once we've finished um, the, the passive catenary we will then move on to distant scenery so you're talking about um, the trees in the background there like fields painting in, in the fields, uh, the textures, the ground textures. And we, we do the, these passes for the entire route, so, um, you know, from start to finish we will do the roads, from start to finish we'll do the catenary and then the distant scenery. And then by that, that point that's given the artist a chance to start working on um, the infrastructure for us. So the infrastructure is this kind of thing here. Uh, anything that interacts with the track, anything that um, will affect us in route building in a, in a sort of bigger sense that all gets done first in a pass and then that allows us once we're finished the distance you need to, to, to come back to the beginning again and do our final high detail pass um, of scenery uh, which you can see here we're needing completion of this section so if you have all, all that you need in order to finish a scene that actually it really helps you to create a nicer a nicer environment and more flowing environment. We have Google overlay in game which is really useful um, we use this a lot when we're doing level design you can turn into the opacity up and down and um, when we're doing our distance scenery this is really helpful because you can place large um, asset blocks of trees and paint in large areas of fields relatively quickly we can actually paint down textures for roads for areas where we know we're go they're going to be placed and then we can we can switch off google earth relatively quickly as, as sometimes it can, it can be a wee bit distracting to have that on when you're trying to work um, but it really does help us map things out quickly and efficiently. It also does help you when you're uh, when it comes to the point where the, the 3D artists are passing over assets for us to place. We can then also you know turn that back up again and, and ensure that we are in fact getting assets in the right places and the assets uh, are, are exactly where they're supposed to be. We use Google Earth a lot for um, reference material which is, is really really helpful in a, in a big sense of a map. In Switzerland um, it's one of the only places, it's the only place in fact in the world where they have street view uh, for the trains so they've strapped the, the camera to the train and gone along um, the train tracks 
and this this is invaluable for us as root builders is we do have other reference material but for for a lot of things we do between stations we we don't really have an awful lot we kind of have to go on you know what what we've done before and kind of having a style so when you when you have a actual actual street view in areas that you've not been able to see before it really helps us to accurately recreate the the world that we're trying to we're trying to make you can see here um coming into Rikinau station you've got the bridges you've got houses and the trees and the mountains and everything and um it allows us to obviously recreate that um, you can see there the bridge, the houses and everything. You can see the level of, of accuracy that we're able to, to get into with, with that. The artists will work on um, bridges and infrastructure for us first, so anything that we have that interacts with the track um, affects our ability to, to build the route uh, in a, in, from a level down, uh, design perspective. Um, so they start from the beginning and work sequentially through the route, working on uh, bridges and infrastructure for us. And then once they've finished that pass, uh, they will they will double back and start to do platforms for us. Platforms are the next thing um, because that affects gameplay. That allows a uh, level design to then place passengers for for gameplay. We've got all the platforms in, and then at that point the artists will then move on to any of the other iconic buildings that we've um, selected that will need to be modelled. Once we have um, all the infrastructure and the platforms, the station buildings, uh, that allows us to then go back and do a sort of final pass of clutter uh, on, on station platforms, like we have uh, notice boards, clocks, uh, ticket machines, that kind of thing. This is a point where um, I've actually just got a station from um, a member of staff that has been working on it. Um, and we will, what we would do in this situation is we would take the station um, and we use um, these things called placement markers. Uh, we, we place these in game, these yellow markers here, and the artist will extract that data um, before they start modelling and put it in the model for us so that everything will align with the track perfectly once once we've placed it. So I'll show you that here. This is Versam Safian station which has just been modelled so you can see um, the artists have spent a lot of time putting a lot of detail in here like door handles on and um, the textures are really nice and the building's looking great. What I would then do is I would spend the time checking that any of the terrain or any of the surrounding area that has been modelled, make sure that it all fits in well with the terrain that we have in the game, that there's nothing really standing out as um, a big issue. I would then do a quick once over of the model to make sure that again there's nothing really standing out as, as a huge issue that would come, uh, come back on us. For example there, there's a slight issue with them. Um, uh, Z fighting on that window. And that's when two planes, um, two polygons in a model um, are too close to each other and uh, you can see they start to fight. Um, you can see the flicker in there in the screen. Any little things like that that um, become more apparent once you place a model in the game, um, those, are, those are the kind of things that we have a, a slight back and forth with the artist. Um, but overall that, that model is looking really nice and fits in really well with the terrain and everything that we have in the game and then what we would do is we would then dress that area, we would bring the scenery in, get all the station clutter items, any of the other iconic buildings that uh, are then to come in at a later stage, for example, I'll jump to this area. So that's your Google Earth, that's the station there. Uh, we would then use this as a, a reference and we would place your clocks, your ticket machine, any um, points of interest and then there's also some iconic buildings we're still waiting for to come in here, but then we would start placing fences and trees and just bringing the detail in so that it's exactly how it, how it is in the real world. My undergraduate degree was from Glasgow School of Art in Fine Art, which is quite a, a big difference to what I'm doing now. Um, I worked for a few years at Glasgow Caledonian University um, after I graduated art school, um, and then I ended up going back for a year's postgrad in uh, 3D design for virtual environments. This really kind of piqued my interest in sort of uh, art, like games art. I started working at Dovetail Games, um, working on Train Sim 
Train Simulator um, for a few years and then we moved on to Train Sim World. The two games are slightly different. Uh, in Train Simulator you play more as the train um, and in Train Sim World it's more of a first person, like you play as a driver. So working on the two games from a level des design perspective is, is slightly different, but um, working on Train Sim World and then um, jumping back to Train Sim simulator I, I feel has been hugely beneficial you can see um, the, the the level of quality of uh, what we're producing now is 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 really really good and um, we're really really proud of what we what we've achieved here we're trying to approach things slightly differently and um, we're trying to uh, make the most uh, efficient use of our time as I said before like trying to get the the, the passage right trying to get the the order of things right um, if we can get in route building get in and get the road and the catenary done that allows the artists to then take their time um, modelling infrastructure and bridges for us um, if we can get in earlier and do distance scenery that allows the artists once they finish infrastructure to then move on to the iconic buildings and then by the time they have completed iconic buildings and stations and platforms that's the point where we can then go back and spend the time creating the high detail scenery at the track side. It allows the the, the processes and the, fl the workflow to to be far more efficient. Um, and I feel like the, the, the end product is far superior than it would be trying to get everything done in one go.